financial markets in turmoil. What are the root causes of the financial crisis? The dollar losing value. Heading for its biggest loss in nearly three decades. Will Social Security even be there? I don't know. Buy or rent? That's a very good question. Interest rates? I'm not so sure. Where do you put your money? I don't know. Welcome to the show that answers your questions. This is Follow the Money Weekly with your host, economist and best-selling author, here's Jerry Robinson. Friends, welcome to you all around the world. Welcome to Follow the Money Radio. So grateful to have you here along for the ride today. We have a good show lined up for you. Today, as you can see from the title, gold is set to shine. We are talking about physical gold today on today's podcast. We haven't done a, a gold ex exclusive podcast in some time. And the reason why we are turning to the topic of gold today are, well, the reasons are there's a few reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, back in February of 2019, we alerted all of our members that gold had entered a new long-term uptrend. That was back whenever gold was trading at around $1,300. And we issued that uptrend alert, that long-term uptrend alert. And since that time, gold has gone on to set a new all-time high that actually was reached last summer. You may recall back in the middle of 2020, gold soared uh, above $2,000 and hit a new all-time high. Well, since that those peaks back in August of 2020, gold began to drift down, uh, you know, still remaining in a long-term uptrend, technically speaking, but it pulled back in such a way that caused some people to wonder, has gold lost its mojo? Is it going to serve as an inflationary hedge as it has for so many centuries uh, in the past? And on May 7th, all of our members here at Follow the Money received an alert, an email alert from us, letting them know that a, another new position uptrend, which is we identify the position uptrend on the weekly chart. And we saw that there was a new uptrend forming on the weekly chart of gold, and we alerted all of our members. That was when gold was trading for around $1,830. Well, now we see gold beginning to surge in this environment. And it's not really a surprise because you may recall from our last podcast where we talked about how inflation is here, many money managers had been perhaps living in a sense of denial that inflation was really going to show up in consumer prices. Uh, and who can blame them? Because we have heard about inflation coming to consumer prices, but because of technological innovation and so many other aspects, it hasn't really shown up in the official numbers that the monetary and fiscal authorities here in the United States that they put out in their official figures. But we did begin to see inflation uh, showing up in consumer prices just recently, right? So that for the month of April, we saw a 4.2% increase in the CPI, which is already you know, a number that is pretty deficient in really tracking the real meaningful rise in consumer prices. But nonetheless, using the, the uh, government CPI figures, we saw that in April, uh, consumer prices, the basket that government measures, rose by 4.2% year over year. Now, that was big, right? That was a big, big surge. We haven't seen that kind of surge since the 2008 uh, crisis. And then we also saw that in the month of April, the consumer price index rose by almost 1% month over month. So over a period of 30 days, indicating that consumer prices are now rising. They're rising strongly. In other words, because of all of this money printing, that money that's out there is now causing the price of things to rise, right? And that's how inflation works. Inflation begins with an inflation of the monetary supply, which we talked about last on our last podcast. If you didn't, if you didn't uh, hear that podcast, go back and listen to Inflation Is Here. It's our last podcast that we did, and we drilled down on what inflation really is. But now that inflation is showing up in the official figures, now the government has to admit 
that prices are rising for consumers and, of course, producers. Producers are also paying more. And so in this environment, many money managers who had not been looking to things like gold as a hedge against inflation are now suddenly turning to gold. So we are seeing, according to several reports, many money managers now moving client money into gold or other kinds of inflation hedges so as to protect the purchasing power of these investment portfolios. So we're seeing, you know, large institutions, we're seeing, of course, central banks, we're seeing large investors, and we're seeing even small investors realize the power of having some exposure to an inflationary hedge like gold. And so today on today's podcast, I'm going to be joined by two individuals who have been helping individuals just like you for the last four decades, actually more than four decades. Both of these are heavyweights uh, that we have on the podcast today. First, I'm going to be joined by Tom Cloud. For those of you who are not familiar with Tom Cloud, you're probably not familiar with our Follow the Money podcast because he's been around for a long time here at Follow the Money. He's been with us since 2010, providing updates and providing uh, understanding of how the gold and silver markets work. Now, I want to stress to you that it's not just gold that looks good in, in, in this environment. Gold is looking very attractive right now, given all of the things that we see. But we don't want to discount the fact that silver also looks very attractive, and platinum, for that matter. So there are several other metals that we could talk about, but today we're going to focus strictly on gold. There might be a little mention of silver and platinum later, but our focus is really on gold today. Now, uh, but that doesn't mean that we're excluding those other metals because those other metals are also very well poised as we move forward. So I'm going to be joined by Tom Cloud first. He's going to share with us what he's seeing as a 40-year-plus veteran in the gold market. He has seen a lot of different things. He was helping people Back in the 1970s, the 1980s, whenever there was a really interesting move going on in gold and silver. And he continues to help people uh, today to diversify a part of their portfolio into gold. So we'll be joined by Tom Cloud first. And then I'm going to be joined also by Mike Mitchell. Now, Mike Mitchell has also been helping individuals just like you for 40 years put together financial plans and retirement plans. And we're going to get Mike Mitchell's take on gold and its role in an individual's portfolio. You know, some financial advisors don't like gold. And one of the reasons, and let me just be frank with you, just be very, very frank, is the fact that it's it's funny sometimes how if someone doesn't sell something, then they don't necessarily think it's a good idea, right? Now, I'm not slamming all financial advisors here. I'm simply saying that it's interesting that sometimes you will talk to a financial advisor or you'll, you'll hear somebody talking in the financial media and they'll be trashing gold because gold doesn't pay a dividend. But you and I both know that we don't turn to gold for a part of our portfolio to get cash flow. That's not why we would hold gold. It doesn't pay a cash flow. It doesn't provide any kind of dividend. Instead, we turn to gold uh, for a part of our portfolio to provide inflation protection. That is really all gold is, is insurance against poor monetary and fiscal policies. And do we have those in full force today? So we're going to begin with a discussion with Tom Cloud, and then we'll bring on Mike Mitchell uh, to discuss also what his view of gold is. But before I bring on Tom Cloud to discuss gold, I first want to share with you five reasons why I own physical gold today. I personally own physical gold in my own portfolio for the long term, as I stated, for insurance against poor fiscal and monetary policies. And many of you know that I've been talking about the benefits of own owning gold for as long as this podcast has been in existence. Now, the first reason that I own gold is because I believe that gold is money. You know, for millennia, humans have considered gold as the ultimate store of value, the unit of account, a medium of exchange. In other words, gold has long been viewed as money, and no amount of paper currency can change this fact. In recent years, man has foolishly believed that paper fiat currency issued by government 
somehow has the innate ability to replace other historical forms of money that actually boast intrinsic value. But this is a grave mistake. And gold has kept its value over decades and centuries of time. We have a long track record here that we can turn to when it comes to gold. The second reason that I own gold in my own portfolio is because, as I had mentioned, gold has intrinsic value. Because gold exists in finite supplies as opposed to fiat paper currency like the U.S. dollar, its value cannot be derived by a simple government edict or decree. Governments may try to manipulate the price of gold, but the breakdown of the Bretton Woods Agreement in 1971 proves otherwise. In contrast, modern paper currency has no intrinsic value. The only difference between a $100 bill and an old piece of worthless paper is that the government says that the $100 bill has value. But that value is not intrinsic, meaning that the $100 bill doesn't hold value in and of itself. Similar to an old piece of scrap paper, its only use is perhaps fire kindling or wallpaper. Government cannot perpetually confer value on mere pieces of paper and expect to have a sustainable economy and monetary system, and we're seeing that today. The third reason why I own physical gold in my portfolio is because I don't trust the U.S. federal government, okay? I don't trust the monetary wizards at the Federal Reserve either. I don't trust the federal government or the Federal Reserve to protect my family from a hiccup in the global fiat currency system, let alone a total financial disaster. So by owning gold and holding physical gold, I am able to somewhat insure myself against Washington's numerous inept policies. You know, paper currency is a modern experiment, which is ultimately heading for a solid brick wall. So the government has shown itself to be a very poor and reckless steward of the public treasury. And for that reason, I just simply don't trust them to protect the future value of the currency that they issue. A quick fourth reason why I hold gold in this environment is because of today's out of control counterparty risk. We have so much leverage, so many, our derivative bubble is absolutely enormous. And I like the fact that the gold that I hold on my person, the physical gold that I own is no one else's liability, that there's no claim on my, on the gold that I own. And no one can purchase a derivative on the physical gold in my possession. So that's a really big thing. And then another reason why I hold gold in my own portfolio. And fifth is diversification, right? Many of you have heard of our diversified six-month liquid savings plan, the DSL uh, plan. You can go to followthemoney.com forward slash DSL. And there you'll learn all about it. And I use gold and silver not only for my long-term investment holdings, but I also use a part of it for my short-term liquid savings reserve. I believe in being spread out, not only in my investments, but in my savings due to the eroding factors on money, these inflationary pressures that we're dealing with. And although gold and silver play an important role in my own personal financial holdings, I am very balanced and I refuse to hold more than 15% of my own assets in precious metals. In addition to precious metals, I utilize real estate, stocks, uh, businesses to diversify my overall investment portfolio. So there's just five reasons why I own physical gold. And as we had stated at the outset, gold now is in an uptrend. And I want to bring on our good friend Tom Cloud to discuss with us what's happening in the fundamentals of the gold market and why we're seeing the price action that we're currently seeing. And let me tell you just in advance, and I apologize for this particular interview with Tom Cloud, that there is a there are a few uh, breaks in the audio due to the fact that uh, Tom is actually at his lake home to, today during this recording and some of the audio is a little choppy. I apologize for that in advance, but you can make out most of what is being said in this interview. Just want to give you a warning up front. Let's head in now to my discussion with Precious Metals advisor, Tom Cloud, on the current action in the physical gold market. Well, joining me on the line today to discuss the ongoing price action in gold, physical gold, is our good friend and longtime sponsor of Follow the Money Radio, Tom Cloud. Tom, it's wonderful to be joined on the line with you today. Thanks for joining me. 
Well, thank you, Jerry. It's always a pleasure to talk to people that are educating and want to know more and more about markets. So you've you got great listeners. It's always a pleasure to talk to them. Well, thank you. Okay, so we've been talking on today's podcast, Tom, and I know you're joining us uh, from your lake home today, so I sure do appreciate you taking some time out to do that. Now, uh, what we've been talking about on today's podcast is just simply the positives that we've been seeing for physical gold, but specifically about the technicals. As we had mentioned, we have a long-term uptrend in gold now. We have a position uptrend in gold. So technically speaking, gold is very well positioned. Now, for some time, many, and you've probably fielded this question so many times, Tom, and I want to uh, begin with this one, is there have been a lot of people wondering why uh, gold has not responded quicker or has been more uh, vibrant in its price action due to the incredible amounts of monetary and, and fiscal stimulus that we've seen here in the United States and even abroad. Some have pointed to Bitcoin as stealing some of the thunder. Maybe some of the speculative investors that would normally be attracted to gold in this environment now feel they have a substitute that they can use that's maybe sexier, maybe that's going to give them more return quicker. Uh, some people even viewing Bitcoin as an inflation hedge. Now, I know you own Bitcoin, I own Bitcoin, but we also both own gold. So can you speak briefly to, as someone who's been in this space for 40 years plus and has now seen some of the uh, buying seems to be diverted to other speculative assets. Are you concerned about gold's historic role in playing an inflationary hedge uh, moving forward? Are you are you concerned in the least? I'm not, Jerry, but the reason is because we're talking about a universe of 7 billion people and new information. People around the world are getting more comfortable with gold all the time. The interview. I did yesterday 40 minutes in Switzerland. It was a interview in Switzerland. And it's amazing uh, just that people are carving out uh, niches in their portfolios for cryptos, which they should. And, but what we're seeing with the gold situation is they're up in their allocation. They may have had 5 or 10% of their portfolio in gold, and now they're going to 10 to 15 or 20 it's, we're seeing money managers that have never bought. I've been doing this 45 years, as you said, and we've gotten probably about 20% of our sales over the last 30 years from money managers. And now it's just incredible. They finally are catching on. They can't keep down their clients. Gold's not a good thing to have. It doesn't produce income. And this kind of stuff is just crazy. But when you get in an inflationary world, and, and most of your listeners never have been in it, probably like we were in the Jimmy Carter years, uh, there in 76 up to 1980. And uh, you see this thing rolling. And my point is, when I talk about premiums, remember premiums being defined as what? I buy from my suppliers for, and your people pay uh, premium plus commission. Okay, so what I'm talking about is the premium as to what we're having to pay. For instance, right now, one ounce gold eagles this moment, they've been 5.75% for years from the week before. Today, if you want them, they're 11 and a quarter. The print has doubled on them, and we still can't get a steady supply of them. Even though we can take orders and lock them down, it takes two, three, four weeks to get delivery, people are paying 5% extra. But that is because new money managers coming in, not understanding Krugerrands, Maple Leafs, gold is gold. They understand there's a gold deal backed by the U.S. Mint. And we're seeing it it's the same way in silver. But we'll get to that later. So as I'm not scared, yet, I think it's fantastic for seeing, you know, uh, Bitcoin, when you and I have been talking about it for years, it's a much bigger hump to get over than gold. Gold is the easy hump to get over. And, and this last thing that I've said on your show more than anything, number one for me is the value of the dollar. 
I'll talk about it. It's gone from 123 down to 90 today. The very day of this interview, gold is brought up. Uh, the dollar has broken below 90. It's at 88, 98 about an hour ago. And if it stays below 90 for two or three days, four days, your intermediate uh, uh, position call is going to be ingenious. It's going to be ingenious. Because we're going to see gold take out 2,000, in my opinion, fairly quickly. But So answer your question is keep diversifying. You know, buy a little bit of crypto, good thing, good hedge, even though it is a lot more volatile than, than gold in, in particular. But certainly I uh, do that. But, but also there's become a huge, huge thing on, even though we know if you buy something and <clears throat> sell it for a profit, you've got a, a long-term capital gain or a short-term capital gain. But we're seeing a lot of our gold today bought in foreign gold because there is no U.S. reporting when you sell it like there are on 24 karat gold. Gold eagles aren't reportable either. It doesn't mean you don't, you don't own tax. It just means that we don't have to send you a 1099, and that affects the premiums on things like British sovereigns and French francs and uh, those kind of coins that are, are not reportable. So all that's important in what is creating the demand. You're listening to the voice of Tom Cloud. He is a longtime gold and silver dealer. He has been helping people all around the country and around the world for that matter. Many money managers and individual investors gain allocation to gold and silver for their portfolios. If you want to talk to Tom, you have a question about gold and silver, or you're thinking about adding exposure to your portfolio uh, with gold and silver or platinum or palladium, uh, give Tom a call. He's available at 800-247-2812. Just tell him that you heard about him from Follow the Money Radio, and he'll throw in free shipping, which is probably going to help out, Tom, with these premiums that you're uh, seeing. I mean, the you know, the, the pre let's talk about these premiums that people are having to pay in order to gain access to uh, these coins and bars. Obviously, you're going to guide the individual investor who's wanting to pay as low as premiums as possible. You can do that, as you mentioned, by using different products. But what's really driving the premium? Is it really due to a strict supply? Are we seeing supply chain constraints here? Is that why the premium is higher? Or are they just simply taking advantage of the current situation? What is it, in your opinion? You've been doing this for a long time. Is well, the latter, the latter thing is yeah, the other thing you said, I do think the U.S. men is taking a sort of thing. There's no reason to buy a gold eagle. In fact, every reason not to buy it if you're buying gold. But once again, I think the money manager involved has been big. Might be about one, one money manager. Bowers is allocating 3% of his clients. He flew in here in California two days with me. And uh, at 3% of his uh, bank is over $3 million uh, that he wants to allocate. To. So that's and then, you know, to start teaching him the difference between a crude ram, a maple leaf, a eagle, a buffalo, kangaroo, all the gold coins that are out there, and try to understand him. He just goes with what he finds to be, you know, the most visible to his clients, being a gold eagle. But our clients, your clients, most of them don't uh, do that. They can buy one-ounce gold bars. And I've said many times on this show, there's nothing wrong with my gold coins. I own gold coins. But most investors, want, it would be better just to buy, uh, you know, a lot more bars out of a London Bullion Market Exchange. Mint, there's eight different mints like Credit Suisse and Pamp Suisse and Val Candy and knows that uh, is the best way to buy it. And the reason is, if someone wants to short gold or go long gold and, and they have to put it out in the future market, coins can't be put up as collateral. So the bars continue to be my it's the lowest premium, most turnover. You get instant bids like you do on all of them. But uh, it, the premium's 5 or 6% less right now. I just makes no sense to me to 
pay that much extra for a vehicle, but it is, it is going on. And without question, there is a surge in volume. We, we saw even with India, people dying like crazy. They had the biggest month in gold, 468 uh, ounces was transported into India during the month of, of March and April. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's just people wanting to get out of paper. They realize what the U.S. policy, all this money is being printed. I just saw the thing that uh, debt's not officially hit $30 trillion, but it's right at it. $30 trillion at an average of only 2% interest is $600 billion in interest a year on the U.S. debt. It is growing and growing and growing, and so you're going to think people position once this thing, and I've made this comment many times. In my history of doing this, when the U.S. dollar goes down 1%, gold goes up 3 to 4. You can go back and look at those numbers at any time. They're going to be very close. So right now, if we get a drop from 90 to 72 on the dollar that I expect, the economists expect over Biden's administration. We're talking about then a, a twenty a twenty percent drop. So we're talking about an eighty percent rise in gold. You put eighty percent on top of eighteen hundred, you're about twenty six or twenty seven hundred. And that's where it's gonna go with while Biden's president. Uh, and certainly there are things out there that could change that. Um, I'm just saying they keep monetizing and printing the way out of a recession. That's what's going to happen. So in addition to gold, Tom, uh, you also have been focused upon silver for many, many years as well. You've been you've been a dealer in, in the entire precious metals complex. Uh, palladium, which you, by the way, made an incredible platinum uh, buy signal. You issued a credible buy, a platinum buy signal. Tell us about how that's worked out, and then maybe provide us also an update on silver. Do you see the same dynamics for silver playing out, or which metal are you the most bullish on in this environment? So let me let me back up and just say, uh, give us an update on on platinum, and then tell us a little bit about silver. Your take. When when you gave an uptrend at eight sixteen, I think it was, or seven sixteen. I don't have any notes in front of me. Um, we gave a buy signal to all of our clients shortly after. You were a little bit ahead of the game on that call when it got down to 700 and plating was up, like you said, over three, over 2,000. So what's happened and it's continued to grow with all these new outlets and, and especially a lot of these new windows where they're putting platinum dripping through the windows that maybe even – Places like Alaska, even uh, their power bills go down drastically. You're seeing that. You're still seeing the catalytic converter is the main thing still driving. It's cars around the world during the pandemic are short, uh, short on used cars and short on new cars. I'm even hearing. But the main thing on platinum is we've watched it since that car about two years ago go up 50%. I don't think there's any doubt that platinum is 42 times more rare than gold. Platinum is 42 times more rare than gold. I want you to hear that. And believe it or not, we're even getting some of our financial advisors that have been in it, you know, for months and a couple of years now, they were only doing gold and a little bit of silver. Now having their clients buy platinum because they've been getting things from their own brokerage firms telling them that platinum is going to go to 3000 So I, I think it's at 1222 you can buy the bars about 6.5% premium, which is only about 2% higher than normal. And I, would, I sure wouldn't try to wait on the premium fall because it may not. So I'm very bullish still on platinum having part of your um, hard asset portfolio in that with gold and silver being the predominant ones. Now, silver, Jerry, is a lot of things going on in silver. This morning it got up $28. We're talking about something that was 13 when the pandemic started 15 months ago, over double uh, in that period of time. 
premiums are, if we go back right now to the to the, this morning, the U.S. Mint sent us another up in our cost on Silver Eagle. They're now $12, $12. Now, we've got kangaroos and Britannia's live for the first time in three months, which means they can buy them and get them shipped to them. They're $5.10. So the Eagle is almost $7 more. And the demand is not slowing down. It's crazy. The demand just keeps, and even in the office, we keep getting calls. People wanting eagles, even though it's not as many of our clients want them, but a lot of surge of these new clients wanting silver or U.S. minted coins. But I still believe that silver is going to break out. I don't believe the inflation has just started. It has really scared people. I've had three people in the last two days tell me they never even thought about keeping up with the inflation was and all of a sudden they started buying groceries and now they're keeping a chart on the same things they buy every week and she told me it's gone up over six percent in the two months she's been keeping it so people are realizing that inflation is here and the, and the u.s dollar is going down in the world market which quite frankly makes gold go up as a as a hedge or a currency and one other thing just to mention, you know, we we look at gold and what we forget is it's fungible. You can carry it anywhere in the world and you'll give it to one or two percent. Everybody in the world knows what every coin looks like if you're going to a dealer. Well, it's fungible. You can take it and trade it in for paper that you may need to buy, buy a new car or whatever. So you've got to cash in some of your gold and it's fungible. But the other thing that is starting to hit are these non functional things that you talked about uh, early on. And it's uh, going to affect markets because it's going to bring other, especially hard asset products, in. So while they'll be non fungible certainly they'll reach toward fungible. And so we're going to see a lot of that going on, Jerry. But still, right now, I've got my pedal to the metal, and it's uh, putting every penny I can into it. I'm not buying silver eagles. I'm buying silver 100-ounce bars. And remember, there's not a trade in the futures market that can be made without collateral when you're leveraging what you put in, and they can only use uh, bars, COMEX bars. So uh, silver is fine to buy coins. Nothing wrong because you do have the advantage of barter. If things really fall apart, you don't have to try to cash in a 100-ounce silver bar, you can take a few coins and keep the rest of it to use later. So um, just real excited about silver. I think it's going through 30 on this move up in gold and silver. It was at 26 last week. Here it is, already up 5% in the last five trading days. Just watch it because it's going to go to 30 spot. There'll be some resistance there. And the jump out of that is going to be the biggest one. So you, you want to be in before that because the premiums are not going to go down in the interim. Very interesting stuff. You're listening to the voice of Tom Cloud. Tom, before we uh, bring this to a close, let our folks know how they can reach you. Tell them what, what to expect when they call. Uh, whenever they call you, how does that work if they want to buy gold and silver? All right. Well, eight, our 800 number is 800 247 2812. And the one thing that uh, they just call is 800 247 2812. Or they can go to cloud, they can send an email to cloud, NNA at att.net. Cloud, NNA at att.net. And they'll get back because we're getting high phone call volume for several months. So we'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Possibly can. The other thing I didn't mention is we're doing more in IRAs than we've ever done. Because what's happening, a lot of people coming out of 401ks and keeping up, getting self-directed IRA for stocks, bonds, and cash, and then getting a precious metals IRA for gold, silver, and platinum. Uh, and you can act as a broker. Uh, we can't be the custodian, but we'll lead them to a couple of good custodians we use but we have hundreds of IRAs 
And it's the smartest thing baby boomers like me can do is to diversify that 401k as soon as you get a hold of it and are eligible to take it out and take it out and create two two of those. And I think you'll be a lot better off because you'll have the gold and silver access through your power as well as some of the things Jerry does. You know, I hope to give you more diversification. So when you call, uh, you'll get Dan or, or Dave or I, Jade or I, and uh, we'll place an order for you and uh, email you an email uh, of an invoice and you send it to us and we release it and we pay all the postage, not only on this, your first order, but every order you do, your grandfather in uh, to that. So it's really, really exciting and uh, we're uh, it's amazing, Jerry, how much lower we are than people right now. There's a lot of brokers trying to take advantage of people while the market's hot. We're seeing companies that were near parallel with us now, 2 and 3% higher, putting it all in the pocket. And change the markups one, one out of it since the start of the company. So uh, we're proud of that. That's one thing we've stressed from the beginning of this podcast uh, This since we started it back in 2010, Tom, and you've been helping us educate people on this topic, is that gold and silver are an excellent hedge against inflation. They make sense for a, por- uh, for a part of your portfolio. Diversification is key. But the most important thing is, when it comes to all of this, is that you have to be careful with who you do business with because there's so much wiggle room for these dealers to be able to charge more that you that you really have to trust who you're working with. And that's why we have partnered with you and we're so proud to have you uh, on the on the broadcast. I know you're you've been helping people for such a long time. You have a great track record. Take a look. Uh, this is exactly what we want to close with is you had stated that your call volume is has been pretty high. So they can call you at 800-247-2812. But if they have a hard time getting through, you mentioned an email. Did you say it was cloud? Uh, what was the email again? Yeah, cloud, cloud, N-A, at att.net. We just put that in for people. Uh, these are the first people hearing about it to, you know, order some ready to buy this. And they can fix and, you know, call back and, and tie it up because we now have a part-time person there too that's following those and believe it or not we're getting the volume is growing on that because once King reaches my phone because we're tied up can say I will give me a price on 100 one ounce silver maple leaves and uh, we can get right back to them so uh, cloud NMA att.net okay is, is the other way to reach us. so it's cloud Quick. Cloud N N A at ATT dot net. That's it. All right, perfect. Well, Tom, thank you so much for taking time to join us today. I'm sure the folks enjoyed it, and I sure do appreciate your time. Always a pleasure, Jerry. Thank you. Hey friends, this is Jerry Robinson from Follow the Money Weekly. Recently, we have been receiving many emails from our listeners commenting on the great help they're getting from our precious metals expert, Tom Cloud. Gold and silver are excellent hedges against the growing threat of coming U.S. inflation. Who's your gold guy? Make it Tom Cloud. With over 30 years' experience with precious metals, Tom will answer all of your questions. Don't buy your gold and silver through some call center and pay inflated prices. Call my good friend Tom Cloud and speak directly with him and get all of your questions answered. For a limited time, Tom is offering free shipping and insurance on every gold and silver purchase made by our listeners. Call 800 247 2812. And when you do, tell him that Jerry Robinson from Follow the Money Weekly sent you. And he'll throw in that free shipping and insurance on your entire order. Call your gold guy, Tom Cloud, right now for the very best deals on gold and silver coins. 800-247-2812. That is 800-247-2812. Well, joining me on the line today again is our good friend and longtime financial advisor, Mike Mitchell. He's a part of our Christian Advisor Referral Network. Many of you are familiar with Mike. You've heard him here on the podcast. Perhaps you've seen him at one of our live events, many of our Follow the Money Summits. 
Mike, thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast. It's great to be here. I, I hope you and Jennifer are doing well, and we're, we're excited to, uh, to be on with you again today. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. Well, today we're talking about gold, and we've spent a lot of time today talking about uh, physical gold, how it can serve as a hedge against inflation. And as you well know, Mike, inflation has become the key word now as the monetary huh. authorities and the fiscal authorities are telling us that inflation is here. It's probably going to be transitory for some time. And so some people are beginning to look to things like physical gold as a hedge against inflation. Now you are, as we have stated, a financial advisor. You've been advising clients for more than four decades now. And I would, yes. I would love to hear your take on gold as an advisor, because you've dealt with so many different people over the years. What is your take as a financial advisor? What's gold's role in someone's portfolio, and what's your opinion of it? Gold has, a, has an excellent position that it should play in anybody's uh, financial plan. Uh, obviously, what you just said makes perfect sense. It is a very good edge against inflation, and, and I think we are certainly in that environment where inflation is going to be an issue that, that people need to pay attention to. Uh, in addition to that, I, I believe gold makes perfect sense for people to look in and have uh, just from the standpoint of balance. Uh, it, it, you know, the old adage of not putting your eggs all in one basket is very important, particularly when it comes to financial planning. And if you have a good, a good, uh, reasonable, rational position in gold in your overall financial plan, it, it, it literally, I think, it creates a ballast, uh, an economic ballast, if you will. I mean, it, it's going to hold its value, it's going to hedge against uh, in, inflation, and uh, it, it also gives people a sense that if 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 push comes to shove and and, and situations in this world get get really severe, then being well positioned in gold makes makes an awful lot of sense. So yeah. I, I, I certainly think it has a, a, a place to play and everybody should certainly be looking at it. And and, and I, I certainly think silver also has a has a uh, has a position uh, to play in that as well. You know that's so refreshing, Mike, because I know that some financial advisors really don't know how to respond to that question. Some of them, and I, and you know that very well, that many of them don't really mm -hmm. see gold and silver perhaps as a as an asset that would belong in anyone's portfolio because it doesn't throw off any kind of dividend. And so, for some people, because right. it doesn't provide the cash flow, it doesn't. Uh, have a part of their portfolio or it shouldn't be a part of their portfolio. So as we look forward, Mike, how concerned are you about what's happening with the economy? Uh, how concerned are you about the current national debt, the current state of our economy, the current spending levels that we see? Uh, how are you advising your clients who are nervous right now? What are you telling them? To answer your question directly, I, I am concerned. I'm not fearful. But I am concerned, and, and, and I think if you're concerned and, and you're well-informed, then you can actually have a game plan in place. And, and I believe that game plan should consist of being well-diversified in, in many, you know, different asset classes. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, just, just the, the follow-the-money philosophy of having multiple streams of income, I think, is a very good approach to dealing with what I believe is is uh, very uh, out of control, irrational, and, and irresponsible uh, uh, physical decisions that, that are taking place, not just in the United States, but I think it's taking place globally, mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I am concerned about it. But I, I certainly, and you've heard me talk about this at some of the live events, uh, I don't think we should ever react in fear because we shouldn't be driven or controlled by fear. Mm -hmm. So having a good game plan, being well balanced, having diversification in your planning model will certainly help you uh, stem the tide of, of, of what's happening. And, um, and and I think that's what we can do individually to protect ourselves and our families. That's fantastic insight, Mike. And I know we were talking off the air about the economic model that you're, you're mm -hmm. th that you use with clients. And it's just so fascinating how that economic model, whenever 
clients see it for the first time, you, it's just so intuitive. So if, pe if people want to reach out to you, if they have questions about their own financial plan, maybe they're nearing retirement, maybe they are just wanting to have a review of their overall retirement portfolio and they want to make sure that they're not missing anything, what's the best way for them to contact you and what does that process look like? Uh, yeah, we, we have a toll-free number that we would invite people to reach out to us uh, with, and, and that number is 833-370-0777. And uh, what we would do is follow up a, a call by connecting with the clients and, and uh, getting them involved in being able to get to us what their financial data is all about. I mean, we have to have that information if we if we don't. If we're making recommendations without being fully apprised of everything that's going on in a person's financial life, then we're actually committing malpractice. We Indeed. we actually have to have have to have all that information to give proper uh, recommendations and advice to clients. But we have a planning model that we can connect them to. They can literally upload their financial data. Uh, in a secure encrypted link that, that brings uh, all their information into us so we can start building financial plans and, and start doing financial models for them. And, uh, and, and that's, that's what we would recommend and, and, and encourage people to do. That's fantastic. You hear me all the time, folks, talk about the importance of having a money guy. You need a financial advisor. And Mike Mitchell has been doing it for more than four decades, and he is part of Follow the Money's Christian Advisor Network. We sure do appreciate you being here today, uh, Mike, and uh, we will look forward to seeing you next time. If you want to give Mike a call, give him a call at 833-370-0777. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for being here today. Thanks, Jerry. Take care. Mike Mitchell is a part of our Christian Advisor Referral Service, and he's here to help you with your retirement needs. If you'd like to reach out to Mike directly, you can call him toll-free, 833-370-0777. That's toll-free, 833 area code, 370-0777. All right, friends, and that brings us to the end of our program. Thank you so much for being a part of our broadcast today. And as always, I'd like to leave you with a final word. This time, it's a quote by Norm Franz when he said, Gold is the money of kings. Silver is the money of gentlemen. Barter is the money of peasants. But debt is the money of slaves. And that's just something to think about. Remember, friends, when you want the truth about the global economy, just follow the money. Have a safe and prosperous week, and we'll see you right back here next time. Until then, God bless. All of the information contained on the Follow the Money podcast is strictly for informational and educational purposes. It should not be construed as specific investment advice. The views and opinions of our guests and sponsors, including Tom Cloud, are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of FTMDaily.com or Robinson Media Group, LLC. Jerry Robinson does hold an insurance license and at times may offer consulting on life insurance and fixed retirement income products. Follow-up, individualized responses to email or phone requests that involve the rendering of personalized investment advice for compensation will not be made absent compliance with state investment advisor registration requirements or an applicable exemption or exclusion and applicable insurance regulations. Past performance is not indicative of future results. You should be aware of the real risk of loss in following any strategy or investment discussion discussed on the podcast. Remember, never do your financial planning through podcast or radio. It's your money. Be wise. Do your due diligence and always consult a trusted financial professional before making any financial decisions.